business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 15% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use offer code Android2. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, Android device, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to All About Android, episode 46, recorded on February 6, 2012. This is your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera, and I'm back. I'm Jason Howell. I never left. <laughs> I'm Ron Richards, and I'm happy. I'm not as angry as Jason is, apparently. Wow. We've had this little pre-show. We've been fighting a little bit. Uh, I, I put my game face on for the show. I act like I like you guys when we're on the oh, camera. Oh, oh man. Yeah, it's, Ron, it's hard for me to let Welcome go, back. Ron. We missed you. Thank yeah, you very much. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be back. And the fact that you're back means all the photos from Hawaii have ended now from Twitter and Path and all the various, <laughs> yeah. all the various apps that I have. I have some that I haven't posted you. yet. I think oh, I'll great. put a gallery. Fantastic. I'll make sure that I oh, link it to you. Awesome. You know, my Hawaii gallery. One you can, come, you can come over and we can plug it into the Google TV and you can Absolutely. do the, the vacation. I will yeah. show you this yeah. is That's that beach and this is that I would beach. love to spend three hours doing that. <laughs> Okay, really. awesome. We will. <laughs> uh, this week, we're going to be discussing the Galaxy Nexus support issue, Google TV update. Ron will be happy about that. The arena is a big grab bag, and we've got a whole lot more in between. But first, I'd like to intro our special guest, Miriam Joie from Engadget. She is the senior mobile editor uh, at Engadget. Thank you Hi, so I'm much. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me, Eileen, and everyone else. Nice to meet you, and uh, this is a good show to have you on. There's lots of uh, news and updates. and Yeah, yeah. we're really jam-packed this week, and what better way to start this show than um, talking about, still talking about the Super Bowl a little bit. In the United States, we had the big Super Bowl event last night, and there was one commercial of note, ha-ha, <laughs> for uh, everyone here in this panel and everyone. I just saw a flood of Twitter uh, replies about it. It is the Samsung Note commercial. Chad, can we show what was shown last night? We can talk over it a little bit. But we've seen these ads before where you see people who are, quote unquote, lining up for an iOS mm -hmm. device. And we had talked about it when they first came out, and yeah. we had kind of credited it, saying it was yeah, a great it was, premise. It was, it was, it was fun to poke a little fun. Yeah. You guys should have a Mystery Science Theater 3000 version. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> We're kind of doing that right now. So yeah. please join in. So we've got all these people in line, Ooh, and so look, a dude. I have a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> <You> annotate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so. Cool. Stir. Yeah, so this guy shows up into that iOS line, and he's showing everybody and circling. Uh, and then, then it takes a, nowhere, takes a turn. Guitar guy comes out of nowhere and uh, destroys everything. No, here, no, this is what I want to happen in my life. Just galaxy notes falling from the sky into my hands. <laughs> Yeah. I would gladly take one for, for free like that. Absolutely. Uh, so know. if you're just... listening in audio, you can't really see what's going on. But basically, all the people in line have left. They all have Galaxy Notes, and they're going crazy. And <laughs> there is a... <laughs> There's a say, choir. There's a I choir. Mean... This is a song by a band called The Darkness that's kind of old now. Uh and there's lip syncing to it, and everyone's dancing with the note, taking pictures. There's a BMX biker in the background. It's, it's just like a, a big party on the street. It's a big block party. It's and just... at this point, what were you guys thinking when you watched this? Uh, first I was time? expecting the riot cops to show up anytime, <laughs> thinking it's an <laughs> Occupy thing. But hey, well, that's just me. And, I mean, and, that, and that's the thing. Like the, the tagline at the end of the commercial was, "The next big thing is already here," and it's right. and it's a clear, you know, kind of slap in the face at Apple and doing yeah. the thing. And but see, and that's the thing is that the first commercial when this came out was clever. Yeah. It was fun. Funny. It was like, oh, that's a little edgy, whatever. With this commercial, it's bad enough. I mean, the stylus is a whole nother issue, whether that's a good <laughs> thing or a bad thing. But the fact that the commercial then went off of the concept and turned into this big party thing <laughs> where it took a right uh, or left turn, yeah. to me, that's where I'm like, oh, this is not good. I was like shaking my head watching the game. It just kind of like, no. felt like trying a little yes, too hard. A little too hard. I don't know. Cool. Like once the guitar but fell no, out of the screen maybe, and they were all dancing. That's the moment it like, turned. Eh. Yeah, that's the moment it turned for me. What are you yeah. about to say, maybe? Maybe they're 
maybe they're being ironic on purpose. I mean, if you yeah. look at the ad, yeah. it's completely over the top. And at the end, Absolutely. the guy just shakes his head and goes, you know, basically, this is this is stupid. <laughs> right. Right. So the guys they're making alone. fun of themselves. That's just my, my take you see, on but, it. But you see, you're uh, right. But the it pro- didn't hit the spot. The problem with that theory is that that gives the audience enough credit to get it. Which I think I think it's clear <laughs> that <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And then on my Twitter that feed, guy, right? Right, right, that guy, yeah, very, that guy. Very, that guy I get yeah. that guy. He's yeah. just like whatever. I'm not phased by anything. Yeah. But he shouldn't be in the iPhone line if he's in phased by anything. Yeah, yeah it's true, right? Um, and then on my Twitter feed, there was a ton of Apple fanboys, you know, making fun of the stylist that they were making a big deal out of it, and um, reframing. And actually, what ended up happening is trending on Twitter became the Palm Pilot, yeah. not the note. That's, that's pretty. So funny. I thought, oh god, I don't yeah, know if was, that's what they wanted to achieve. It was not the Android moment I was hoping for during the Super Bowl. You know, like in terms of. I know, you know I know, and yeah. still, even this morning, I heard people talking about it on Twitter about the stylus. It was a big thing about the stylus. I'm like, you don't have now, to use it. Here's the Samsung Note. I think you're you're a big fan of the Note, right, Miriam? Um, I like it a lot. I reviewed our well. Uh, we did a kind of a group review, but I reviewed in part our our original European model. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm a big fan. I think I think um, I think there's room for it, and I and I think the stylus hey, is is confusing a lot of people. But I think is is uh, there they should be. Somebody tweeted or whatever wrote yesterday that they should have shown what the note can do rather than have a, a block party like they yeah. did on the commercial. Because honestly, it's a Wacom digitizer. You've got a, a pressure sensitive pen here. It's not a stylus. It's way more than that, right? Yeah. So I think showing that would really, really be uh, beneficial. And because right now people are like, okay, so it's got a stylus. It's a gimmick. Most people don't even realize it's a separate digitizer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think this got a lot of flack. <laughs> I actually do like it. The stylus yeah. is always, for, for better or for worse, a kind of a, a punchline in and of itself nowadays. But I do think that there's room for it. I th- I, and I think, th- I agree. I think that there's room for it, but I think they played it up too much in the ad. Yeah. I, I, it, it became such the focus of like having somebody autograph it and yeah. circling the map and things like that. I think the stylist. Well, I mean, take a look at this. Tony, this is Tony Wang's. Uh, <laughs> he got I mean, an autograph of Wayne yeah, Brady exactly what you're talking and about. Greg yeah. Grunberg at CES. Yeah. So he used that as his. Uh, it's his autograph. I mean, I mean that's cool. I mean, to, but to make it the focus, they made it such yeah. a central focus of it. Yeah. You know, I, I just thought it was a bit much. Now, conver- <gasps> conversely, to go a little bit away from the the note, I did think, and it kind of it still applies. But did you see the Best Buy ad? I didn't see the Best, uh, the, Buy, the Best Buy ad. The Best Buy ad actually in chat. I put it, it in the chat in the chat heard, if you want to pull it up it or not. Um, but the Best Buy ad basically was playing up their idea of phone freedom, and they had the ma- the people who've made elements of phones and apps. So they had the dude mm-hmm. who founded Instagram. They right. had um, people who you know have, who start who created these apps that make the phone that, that leverage the phones. And here you can see it here where they're giving examples of who you know who made the camera, who made the who oh, made Shazam. Oh, that yeah. is cool. Yeah. I created Instagram. Square, Instagram. So, I mean, various different phones, too, not just. Exactly, yeah, because they're playing up the whole phone for you. That's why they had the words from friends, guys, and they're on a mm-hmm. plane and they got told to shut up. Right? <laughs> like, it was actually it was actually a really classy, good, well done ad, I thought. Yeah. So, yeah. that looks good. I haven't seen that one yet yeah. either. Yeah, so. Well, very- I'll have to check it out. <laughs> Yeah. So, anyways, a lot of flack about the note uh, last night, and uh, but uh, hey, a lot more people are talking about the note today. That's you know, true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. That is true. Right. Yep. Any press is is good press, yeah. right? Even yeah. the bad ones. Okay. Well, you know what? It's time for our news. All right, so one topic that we've talked a lot about uh, the past few months has been how uh, Android phones, because they're open and you can install apps from, you know, it's not as locked down as iOS, that it was a threat for malware. And we've, you know, we've covered some apps to help you protect from malware. But um, uh, some news broke on the Google blog announcing that now Google is stepping up and adding in uh, support to combat malware. Um, they announced a new service codenamed Bouncer, which uh, that's a good name. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, that actually scans apps for known malware, spyware, and Trojans and, and looks for specific, specific, blah, suspicious, suspicious. Beha- I can't say that. Uh, beha- bad behavior and compares them against previously analyzed applications. Um, actually, the vice president of engineering on the Android team, Hiroshi Lockheimer, uh, said in an interview with, C- uh, with CNET explaining it. And then on the blog post, they went through and uh, elaborated a little more. Once an app is uploaded, their service immediately starts analyzing it for known malware, spyware, and Trojan. So they're analyzing it 
on the upload side. Mm-hmm. So when it's sent to Google to the marketplace, they're scanning it. So it's not so much happening on your phone, rather the apps that they're distributing, which I think is great because that shows onus. Mm-hmm. It shows like, listen, we, you know, you, we're getting these apps from us, so we're trying to protect you before it gets to your, your phone, which I think is key. Um, it also looks for behaviors that indicate an application might be misbehaving and compares against previously analyzed apps to detect possible red flags. So they're consistently looking to see how apps behave and comparing behavior to make sure nothing, you know, nothing bad is going on. And then finally, um, they actually run every ac- application on their on their on Google's cloud infrastructure to simulate how it would run on your device. So they're looking for hidden malicious behavior by testing the apps. I think this is great news, and it's it's, it's, it's a step kind up. Of, yeah, it's yeah. kind of about time. I mean, I think I can get rid of Lookout now. Yeah, hey, well, <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Lookout's got to be like, oh crap. Well, <laughs> well, it's funny because actually, I was looking at Lookout um, recently. Rolled out a product that I almost did for the arena, but I won't. But they uh. they rolled out a product that uh, basically identifies apps that use push ads. Ooh, so really? yeah, yeah. So um, mm-hmm. so look, I think Lookout can still leverage their their technology or what they're doing, but it's basically the same. Remember but is how, it within the Lookout app, or it's a different app? It's a different app. Oh, okay, kind of like yeah. Plan B is a different app, yeah. but it's in the Lookout. Yeah, universe. I think so, or it might be a plugin. I gotta okay. check. Yeah. Well, I and it, it, quickly, it, it really depends on how smart their automated system is because yep. it's not curated by people. It's curated by a system that's going through and scanning. So it's going to match, you know, things that it knows yep. uh, are known malware, you know, possibly from the past or whatever through its algorithms. But you have to imagine that some of that stuff's still going to kind of get through yeah, because and, it's and, just yeah. not been done in that way. And before. they acknowledge it. I mean, Lockheimer said that uh, this quote says it won't it won't get uploaded at all if it's an instance of known malware, but it's, you know, but it's not going to, it's ultimately it's not going to prevent Everything like they, they it needs to detect it before they can prevent it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're also going to be analyzing new accounts to see if they can prevent re- repeat offenders from going back to the marketplace. Mm. So Google's got a lot of smart people on this. So I imagine that they'll catch more than they won't. Um, yeah. I don't know, but it's interesting to see that them doing it way before the device. That's what yeah. I think is fascinating about this news. Yeah. Any thoughts, Miriam? Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a good step in the sense that I think people are going to be a little more trustful. I think, especially the average user, you know, I mean, myself, I only use so few apps that I know where they come from and I'm not too concerned about them getting, um, you know, contaminated with malware or whatever. But I think for the average user, I think this makes a huge difference. I think that, Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they'll they feel a bit more confident. I think that Apple so far has kind of cornered that by, you know, probably being overzealous with the developers in, in a way by, you know, having a lot of uh, hoops to jump. But I think it's it's increased confidence on, on, on the Apple side of things. And uh, I think Android or rather Google was ripe for, for having that as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, moving on, um, just a really quick mention. Um, I just noticed you guys didn't talk about this last week, but... Um, yeah, I, we missed this somehow. Well, I was like, <laughs> oh, do they happen- not think it's... This somehow? is what happens when you go on vacation. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean... But this I, is cool. This I is thought a, it was kind of a yeah, big deal, but and stuff. I feel like it's been coming... Uh, we've kind of talked about it, that it's probably going to go away, and there's been issues with the menu button. Well, guess what? Google has officially killed the uh, menu button and replaces it with the action bar. So, bye-bye. There's an actual uh, blog uh, blog post from an Android developer here. Um, just kind of uh, walking you through, if you're a developer, what you may need to do and what that means for your device. So, essentially, I mean, I think with menu buttons, I think we've always complained, like, the menu button functions so oddly on very uh, various different apps. But I know I, I, Got used to, I, but I always get used to hitting it to figure it out. And that's the thing. Yeah. So um, everyone's sort of behaviors with the phone is going to have to change now. And not everybody has, yep. you know, an ice cream sandwich phone. So yeah. um, yeah. where it makes more sense. Yeah. And I'm not sure that this necessarily means that there will be no more menu. Yeah, uh, it's it just means that yes, yeah. because the action bar. If if you want to kind of think of about like what you use right now that might have an action bar, if you have the Google Plus app. Yeah. How you can kind of mm-hmm. uh, along the top, it has the different segments Google, that you can Google swipe left to, that, to yeah, right yeah. to get to those different areas. I think that's what they're talking about when they say action bar. Exactly. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that those three little dots, if you're on ice cream sandwich and you see those three little dots that signify a menu button, I don't know if that's necessarily going away entirely. Right. There will still be kind of a menu system mm-hmm. built into it, but no dedicated menu button. Uh, and we kind of knew that that was yeah, and the, the, Yeah, this isn't the kind of thing where you're, you're not going to get, they're not going to push a software update and then all of a sudden your menu button's not going to work. I mean, this mm-hmm. is going right. to be a slow kind of a, uh, evolutionary change as, it, as developers start to utilize the action bar a little more. Um, but I, it's smart. Uh, you know, I can't remember what app it was, but there's been a couple of new apps that have come out that I do go to the menu button and nothing happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, it's just sort of like force of habit. 
And, and it's not the an update or whatever. It's a, n- a completely new app. And I'm mm-hmm. going, wait, what, what, what's going on? Yeah. Nothing happens. So uh, I guess that's just what, what's going to happen to you. Any <laughs> thoughts, Miriam? <laughs> Do you care at all? Um, yeah, I think this is actually pretty significant as, as an ex-developer. This is a shift. Uh, it shows that going forward with Ice Cream Sandwich, um, devices that have a menu button, a physical button right mm-hmm. now, whether it's capacitive or actually uh, pressable, uh, that button is going to become the task switcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, you're not really losing that button, mm-hmm. the use of it. What's going to happen is it's a shift in paradigm, it's a shift in user experience. And I think that uh, that's not going to affect anyone running Gingerbread, I think. Of course, they're encouraging developers to create the app such that they don't use the menu button. Mm-hmm. But eventually, I think everybody will be on, on Ice Cream Sandwich and the action bar will replace all the menus just the way you're seeing it in some of the Google apps today on the uh, on Ice Cream Sandwich. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then, as I said, I think devices that get upgraded to ice cream centers to have a menu button right now, that'll become the task changer. And I think that'll work really well. Yeah. yeah it really puts the onus on the developers mm-hmm. because before with that, with that hard, you know, that, that placed on every single device menu button, it just, as we've talked about before, it became a really easy receptacle for everything that they didn't know how to program it into the user <laughs> exactly. interface or whatever. It's like, oh, we'll just dump it into this menu button that, you know, you just got so used to pressing it with an app when you wanted to see if the app did something else that you couldn't yep. find and everything was in there. And so yeah. this at least puts the onus on the developer to say, okay, you can't necessarily hide by that behind that anymore. You can still use a menu button elsewhere within your app, but you still have to kind of give it some thought and really kind of figure out how that plays into the entire experience yeah. of the app. And, so. you know, a lot of people don't like change, uh, but I think <laughs> we'll get used to it. I think yeah. we will. Yeah. 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 So. I agree. Um, all right. So this is not a very easy one to explain, but it's worth noting, even though in the end, the sky is not falling. So last Friday, <laughs> uh, the Nexus loving internet lost its ever loving mind <laughs> when Google removed the CDMA version of the Galaxy Nexus from its official Android developer page. Now, the worry was that Google was doing the unthinkable by basically halting direct support for Verizon's version of the Nexus device, which at its core is supposed to be supported by Google. That's what Nexus is all about. Worry not. (laughs) This is not really much of an issue, certainly not for your stock Galaxy Nexus. And for those of you that develop and install ROMs, though uh, this does relate mostly to you, it's not that big of a deal. And uh, let me just try and explain really quick because it's taken me a while to kind of get my head around, around the implications of this. But the Android open source project in this case is essentially not supporting the CDMA version due to licensing issues with some of the files on the phone. Uh, Companies like Samsung, Verizon, they have these potentially licensed files on the, the Galaxy Nexus that Google and developers can't modify, which basically means they have to be flashed as is. So if you are a developer and you try and build source for the Galaxy Nexus, uh, on Verizon using the um, AOSP directions from Google, certain keys for those files aren't going to sign due to these licensing issues. So Google's basically saying, we can't support this because of these licensed unmodifiable files. And they now put it in the hands of the developers of personal built uh, builds of ROMs to basically work that out. I don't really think it means a whole lot as far as like, you know, if you, if you have a stock Galaxy Nexus, Nothing changes. You know, uh, Google's still supporting that. If you are flashing ROMs on your phone, the developers of those ROMs might have to do different things to, you know, make their ROMs work on the phone. They're not going to get that direct support from the Google page, but they do that for most phones anyways. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, most phones don't have this direct support through Google's support page. So those developers have to come up with this stuff on their own anyways, be it through leaked code or, you know, other other ways. Um, Miriam, I know that you talked about this uh, a little bit on, on your, uh, your podcast as well. What else, what do you think about this? What do you know about it? Well, this was just breaking when we started our podcast on Friday. Um, I have a lot of opinion around this. I actually think there's a lot more going on than you're saying here. I yeah. think that there's a political agenda here as well in Google's part. And I think that is, uh, I think actually Sasha, Sasha Segan of... Um, PC Mag Mm -hmm. wrote a really good post about this in in, uh, around December 8th or so. If I can find the link, I'll email it to you. What it is, is it's it's about CDMA locking locking your device in a way. Okay, so it's very important to understand that when Verizon sells you a phone, the radio firmware on that phone has been optimized, customized, and tweaked for for their CDMA network. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas that never happens with GSM phones. I mean, Mm -hmm. it does with branded GSM phones to some extent. 
like where AT&T, an example was when the Atrix came out and it didn't have full upload speeds, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say here is with a GSM device like the HSP Plus Nexus, you cannot do that because you have to adhere to the GSM standard. It means your radio can be somewhat open and open with quotes because right. you know, it's not necessarily open source code. Right. But at least that radio firmware doesn't have to be signed by – is not signed by the carrier. It's not proprietary to the carrier. Mm-hmm. So that's why to me it's very important people understand the distinction. This obviously has no impact on the average person buying an Exus on Verizon. Right. right? Which I think the knee the knee jerk reaction was that it did and that oh my god right yeah it's not supported or whatever yeah it's developers and yeah I think for developers in the rest of the world this is a very important transition point we're just basically saying is Google saying look we're sick and tired of having to support custom radio firmware and software Ah. and and we want to make it clear that going forward uh, basically what I think happened is. That their experiment of having the Galaxy Nexus as a Verizon device failed <laughs> for them. <laughs> and this is kind of their way of, of dotting the I's and crossing the T's without burning too many bridges. I think you can probably, you know, mark my words that there will not be another Nexus device on Verizon. Oof. Wow. Yeah, I could I could see that. I I totally appreciate your side because this this is what I meant by you know when I said I spent a lot of time over the weekend like really trying to pick this apart because I'm not a developer um, in any way, shape, or form. I I, I like. I like to read as much as I can about it because I want to understand it as much as possible. But the more I read about this, the more it was like, okay, well, this really only applies to the developers making, you know, these custom ROMs. And when I really kind of thought about it even further, you know, ROM developers have to work within a lot of restrictions Regard, you know, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, on the other side, I mean, this is a Nexus device and you expect a certain level of support on a Nexus device. Yep. That right. I mean, it, yeah, this is a first for a Nexus device to not have that extended uh, support. Well, it's actually a second because oh, the, the Nexus S4G is in the same boat. It's also a CDMA device with a WiMAX radio with mm-hmm. custom radio firmware, which is also why they dropped it off the list. That's true. I, I, I remember that now, yeah. So, so you have to understand, I think this is politically a bit of a move in the sense that it's telling, uh, it's telling carriers, look, it's going to be, if you want a pure Nexus device, absolutely, it's going to have to be absolutely pure. It can't have Verizon branding on the battery door. It mm-hmm. can't have pre-installed apps. And it can't have custom radio firmware of any kind. And of course, on CDMA, it's impossible to not have custom radio firmware. <laughs> so basically, it's Google's way of giving them the finger. Ah, wow. <laughs> that's a good way to Long term. So yeah. that's my that's my take. And I've been since very day one, I've been saying that the Galaxy Nexus on Verizon is not a real Nexus. Mm-hmm. And to the end user, I think it doesn't matter because it's going to continue being supported. People are respecting their commitments here, obviously. But I think that you're getting the short end of the bargain. And mm-hmm. when I see the battery life differences in performance and battery life between the two Nexus devices, the HSPA Plus, Plus which I own, and the LTE one, mm-hmm. and I see the some of the bugs and issues that people are running into, it just confirms to me that it was never a fully baked nexus. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, well, this so, certainly isn't the first uh, thing that's kind of pointing in that direction, yeah. too. And everybody had fears when, you know... It, yeah, it definitely was skies falling. It was, we yeah. talked about it on Friday where, yeah. when, when this first broke and I sent it to you and then you sent me back the response, go, the sky isn't falling. It's, it's cool, <laughs> it's cool. But yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I would love to see the, the Verizon uh, nexus experiment uh, be a good one. Um, I'm happy that I, if I, ha- if I am on Verizon, that I have this phone. Um, but yeah, in two years, I'm going to have to really see where the Android, you know, and Verizon kind of thing sits in that regard. Because once you, <laughs> once you go Nexus, you never go back. Absolutely, isn't it? In two years, we're going to have another. What phone is Jason going to buy? I know. It's going to be even further back. You know, like, we, can start, we can start the pool again. You can, <laughs> we, you can sign up for we boxes. We had bets for months on what phone Jason was going to buy. The, then, remember the Vigor, which it, is oh, now the... the oh, God, I still wanted now. you to get that Casio phone, man. That Casio, that rugged <laughs> Casio phone. It's not too late, Rob. It's not too late I at all. I still could. So. He could have gotten the Bionic. That would have been horrible. Yeah. But um, the Bionic was on, you know, early, early uh, last year. We were yeah. thought, oh, he's going to get the Bionic. That's coming out and that never came out. And then so, ultimately I ended up getting the most predictable phone in the, in the yeah. world. <laughs> well, you know, you but should yeah, have, I think. I like it. I, I agree. Regardless. I think Nexus phones are probably the ones that you should get. I stick even with. though I don't have one. Yeah. So I think I think right now on Verizon, I think the best bet is the, the Razer Max, honestly. Uh, well, I think and that's, that's what I'm oh, playing with right now. Well, I gotta say, no. Yeah. Go ahead. 
you just have to accept the fact that it's not a Nexus and yeah. it's just, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a custom skin and it's a, it's a, you know, it doesn't have as much nice of a display, but I think Motorola really did a tour de force with the, uh, the, the battery life on this device, uh, considering the thickness of it, that they're really setting the trend for the future here. I think uh, a lot of other people are going to follow. I, I completely yeah. agree. I reviewed yeah. the razor and I, and I actually had a hard time deciding, you know, which I would recommend more. Obviously the, the Nexus has its serious strengths, but, um, the razor was just a really nice phone to spend time with. And now I have the Max. I'm playing with that, and uh, I mean, the battery is just ridiculous. It's so awesome. I have been such a Motorola hater for so long. I don't like any of those Me Motorola too. phones. Yep. Yeah. Until I spent, now I actually took the, the, this is just the regular Razor, so I already know the differences, and I understand mm -hmm. that the Max is probably the one that I want, but I really enjoyed my experience. I spent yeah. a week with this thing. I This is really the first Motorola phone that yep. I yeah, actually... Solid. Am excited about okay, every hold, day. I was like, in unity here. I, I, know, unity. I was Raising like, solidarity. every day I was like, I really like this phone. Yep. Yeah, the display is not that great, but I really like this phone. And so I know yeah. the Max is probably, like you said, Miriam, the one to get. I'm very That's impressed. Cool. And now I'm not so much of a Motorola hater anymore. Yeah, no, it's, it's tempting. It's, it's, it's interesting. I really wanted to hate the Razor, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. the premise of the naming and the fact that it's the oh, droid yeah. and, and the motor blurish kind of UI. And yep. I have to say, I'm still disappointed with the camera performance uh, and the display performance. I would agree. I took some pictures but that were turned out blurry. My, <laughs> it's still my go-to LT device on Verizon. Uh, okay. Every time I have to pick one, I think to myself and I'm like, hmm... Yeah. And then it's the Razor. And then so now I don't have a Max myself, but uh, my colleague Brad reviewed it for us. And I have a feeling that right now that would probably be my pick if I was absolutely yeah. stuck on Verizon. It'd be that or the Galaxy Nexus. But the Galaxy Nexus, I just, I, I irks me so much to buy not a real Nexus. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'd much yeah. rather just buy something completely different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a Android on Verizon means the Droid brand. And, and maybe that's not a bad thing, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. All right. I, uh, I'm happy I'm not the only one to kind of go back and forth between those two devices because no, I completely it's, agree. It's hard. It's hard. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get to this email real quick because it is actually a pretty quick email. Uh, Stacy writes in and says, hey, guys, I have a question dealing with notifications. When I listen to audio or video podcasts and receive a text, the podcast audio fades out. And I miss parts of the audio. This only happens when I get a text or a picture message, but it never happens on app notifications such as WhatsApp. Those notifications play over the top of the audio. Is there any way to fix this? I have a Thunderbolt. Love the show. Um, Stacy actually tweeted at me. I don't know. Uh, oh, I, I, really? Yeah, saying, please, I need help. So oh. I want to make sure that we <laughs> answered the question. Help. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the answer, and everyone correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty positive that the answer is that Android is just kind of always more or less operated this way, and there is no easy way to change that behavior. Yes and no, though. I mean, we you, and we made the note in pre-pro saying here that some some apps can control the way that behavior is some handled. Do. But um, I've, what I found with the Ice Cream Sandwich is that if you, at least on my Nexus S, because I, I use... Uh, uh, pocket Cast all the time, listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. and I was running into the same problem because I always tend to keep my phone on vibrate, which would do, which would stop the audio and do the vibrate. Or I tend to, I used to keep it on one click to avoid the vibrating on the table, mm -hmm. one click up, so I just get a very soft ringtone, but it would interrupt the podcast. But what I found on ice cream sandwich is that now there's the completely silent mode. Oh, okay, and yes. that never interrupts the audio playback when I get a text message. Or a yeah, I guess okay. I guess so. what I was thinking in my head yeah. was more um, not pausing it, but still playing the notification mm -hmm. noise. Right. Yes, if you silent your phone, your ringer and notification of volume completely, it yep. won't pause it and exactly. it'll keep playing. Yep. Problem is, you're silencing your notifications. Mm -hmm. That might be okay for you. Yeah. Um, if I, what I you find want. myself having my phone on silent more often than I'm yeah. not these days, to be honest with you. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, if what you want is to still hear it, um, and hear it. I know on iOS, I think it ducks down. So the audio of what you're listening to kind of ducks down, lets the notification play, and then ducks this, back up. This topic is I was on, when I was on TNT last week or two weeks ago, we talked about this as well, where people were complaining about the, the control of volumes and whether the app controls of the iOS and how the, I, uh, how the OS will override the app functions. Mm -hmm. um, so no one's quite figured it out, I don't think, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. But it's a good point to be made. Yeah, yeah. and there are custom ROMs like Cyanogen that actually have, Cyanogen actually specifically, 
actually has an option called notification focus that will allow you to attenuate the volume for notification sound. So it doesn't pause it. It just kind of plays it over the top. And you can select what the volume is uh, when that interplay happens. Which is really cool because focus is a personal uh, hot button topic for me. I can't stand it when desktop OS is still focused on the windows. It drives me crazy. So like, especially with notifications as well. So that's, that's a pro for the Cyanogen monster. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Ron. I think this is uh, Cyanogen is doing it right. Yeah, and totally. it just shows you, that, again, Android fragmentation at its best here. Nobody can get it right and agree and there's different <laughs> ways. And it drives me nuts every time I review an Android phone. I, I'm often just listening to uh, streamed internet radio on it and then notification comes in and I have a different behavior and i'm just like can, can we please agree on something or give me a setting to do it right it's you know hopefully they can fix this going forward all the manufacturers out there yeah you just want the the way to to make that setting yourself or at least choose like the behavior that you want but then right. you make it so co complicated in the settings and stuff is it too it's like a double-edged sword is it too complicated for the normal user yeah right so, yeah. Anyway, um, so. So I would love to have that option. Yeah, so Stacey, <laughs> hopefully get back to us. Let us know if it worked out all right. Yeah. And then we'll Flash Cyanogen yeah. Mod. I don't know what, what more to tell you on that one. Thanks. Uh, or Silas. I would, I, would, I would also recommend you get another phone because the Thunderbolt is, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, well, I know, I know. Yeah. It's, Thunderbolt. Yeah. <laughs> it's the butt of all the jokes in the office. Yeah, it, had, yeah. it had so much promise. Uh, all right, let's take a very quick break and thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. Love Squarespace. We all have Squarespace blog. Uh, they're super easy to use. If you want to build a website from scratch, have a blog integrated with it, social networking functions. They've got all these sorts of widgets and stuff. It's it's quite literally, it's it's a it's a drag and drop uh, process for the most part. It makes it very easy to bring in all of these elements and build up your web page from scratch. They have all these templates. So you can pick a template and then modify it to make it your own. Um, all sorts of widgets, like I said, Twitter, Flickr, kind of like a, they have a new slideshow actually. Yeah, um, I got yeah, that so email So I got that email, today. so did I. I was yeah. like, what? What's this? They have a new, <laughs> new slideshow that kind of makes their slideshow experience even that much better. Um, and they're always constantly changing and, and bringing new features to the Squarespace uh, platform, which ultimately means that you get to build an even better website. So it's very cool. I'm pretty much, uh, you know, <laughs> brain dead when it comes to coding uh, for the web, uh, which which is actually why I ended up going with Squarespace because it was really simple. But if you aren't as brain dead as me with programming for the web, there's also um, areas that you can get really kind of geeky with their CSS coding. They actually have another new feature where you can break out a window for your CSS uh, from your site so you can kind of make those changes um, in a separate window and, and kind of monitor how that affects your site as you go along. Uh, lots of tracking options, just a ton of different features with Squarespace and I highly recommend it personally as as well as because they're sponsoring the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so use them for all of your site needs. Build it, host it, and upgrade it at any time. So for a free trial, go to squarespace.com. You can sign up for a free account. No credit card is needed. You can just try it out. Start building your website right away. And then if you love it, which you probably will, and you decide to purchase it, use our offer code. It's Android2 and get 15% off for six months. That's squarespace.com. Use the offer code Android2, and you'll get 15% off for six months, and you'll be pretty happy about that because it's awesome. Yeah. So check it out, <laughs> squarespace.com. We thank them so much for supporting uh, all about Android as well as the Twit Network. Thank you, Squarespace. All right, let's get into hardware. Ooh, hardware. Mm -hmm. My favorite top. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I know. Do you like that? And we yeah. break them? I feel like they're really behind with our podcast. <laughs> uh, okay, really quickly, there were apparently some refurbished Motorola Zooms that came with private data uh, from previous owners. Not cool. uh, these Zooms were part of a deal on flash sale uh, site Woot.com last fall. And uh, while thousands of them were sold, 100, about 100 were shipped out to new owners with information um, the previous owner had left on them, including passwords, account information, photo and documents. Uh, part of me feels like gotta hit that factory reset <laughs> do so <laughs> yeah. before you yeah. do yeah. something like this uh, but apparently by way of apology Motorola is offering any customers who bought and returned the tablet from a number of retailers uh, between March and October two, uh, 2011 two years of membership to experience protect my ID credit monitoring service but really there's it's just very easy to find in settings there's a factory reset if you're gonna let go of that and it Wipes yeah. everything. So uh, apparently... Don't leave your fate in somebody else's hands. Yeah. When it comes no. to your data, just take care of it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> 
So it was uh, Christmas in February for me over the weekend when I turned on my Google TV and I saw there was a software update. I was very excited. I was like, wow, so soon? Uh, but so uh, they and on my Sony Blu-ray player uh, that has Google TV, uh, got the uh, Google TV update to 3.2 that rolled out to Sony units. No word yet on review on the Logitech reviews getting the update yet. Um, of course. And the, the, this update is a small update. It truly is a point update. Uh, I had some tweaks to Chrome, added support for Blu-ray 3D playback, which is interesting because my brother-in-law, who I got a Google TV for Christmas, got a blue uh, got a 3D movie and was like, hey, it didn't work. And I was like, hmm. oh, I don't know why. Let me look into this. And I was like, oh, that's why. So now I can tell them to go apply the update, and I want to see if it works from there. Um, but the uh, big news for it and for folks who stream uh, video from other sources like their laptop or desktop to the Google TV, this is a big improvement because now they've added improved support for HLS or HTTP live streaming. So if you utilize a, a, an app like Plex – or, um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, another uh, another type of uh, stre- uh, media streaming app. It increases the number of formats that you can now play uh, on your Google t- on your Google TV. So uh, Google TV keeps getting better. There you go. Do you use Google TV, Miriam? No, I'm not yeah. much of a TV person. I don't really have a big screen TV at home. I mean, I have a large monitor, but mm-hmm. it, it'll uh, work. It'll work on your large monitor. So. No, I know. I mean, <laughs> is, is, um, See, Ron's I mean, no, our salesman. He's our Google TV yeah. salesman, so um, he's yeah. just trying no, to just, pimp it to I you. I just have media. I mean, any computer can play the media that mm-hmm. I need to watch, so I just I just do that, right? Well, I mean, yeah. I, I get it, though. If I had a living room that was had a nice setup, I would... Uh, you know, I live in San Francisco. Everything is small and yes. tiny. Yes. And yep. You just kind of do the best you can. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, finally, this isn't the most groundbreaking thing, but I did think the price point was uh, was appealing uh, to some. So I thought we should mention it. The ZTE Optic. Yes, it's a 3G Honeycomb 7-inch budget tablet coming to Sprint for $99. It's actually available as of yesterday oh. um, in stores in March. And, you know, the specs on this aren't horrible. It's 1.2 gigahertz <laughs> dual core. <laughs> No, I think when you say ninety nine dollars, people expect that it's going to be horrible. And it doesn't I'm sound saying, awful. Well, I'm saying ninety nine bucks is not horrible. You you are locked into a two year contract though, so that's yeah, the other side of this. Right? And actually, yeah. off contract is three hundred forty nine dollars. So and there's a bunch so, of accessories that come with it. Well, for extra there's, price, there's a magnetized uh, cover. Ooh, like it's the like iPad. The iPad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Awfully familiar. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I've seen that before. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so just real quick, 1.2 gigahertz uh, dual-core processor, 7-inch display with a 1280 by 800 resolution, 1 gig of RAM, 16 gigs internal storage, micro SD card slot, 5 megapixel rear, 2 megapixel front. You know, it has everything that you would need in a tablet, and it's 99 bucks. What do you guys think about this? 99 bucks, but two-year contract. I mean, Is that get- worth it? Well, I mean, for me, probably not, but for the average user, it may be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I mean, that's a that's an appealing price point. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think I hate the contract, and I also think yeah. that when you can get uh, an LT Galaxy Tab Seven Seven mm-hmm. on Verizon mm-hmm. for uh, maybe a hundred dollars more on con- uh, off contract or whatever, I don't know the price actually. I should check, but I, I would save you pennies and buy that. I mean, once you see the display, Super AMOLED HD. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like you don't want to go back. I think that if you want to, if you're budget conscious and you want ice cream sandwich tablet, don't get it from a carrier. Just yeah. just get yeah. just get a Wi-Fi one of some kind, or yeah. or totally. you know, put your own ROM or something. Did you guys see the one that we covered at CES, the seventy nine dollar ice cream sandwich tablet? And this is like contract free. Now, which is which is who, where is that from? Yeah, who was, it was that? Made in China by a company called Inovo, I believe. I think I saw that. And one. and it's there's two models, a $79 one and a $99 one. Now, don't expect the kind of specs you see here. This is right. really quite nice specs. I mean, the resolution on that display is going to be pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And also the dual core and the one gig of RAM. But this other tablet is a single core, you know, 512 megs of RAM kind of deal, one gigahertz. And it, But it's not too bad running ice cream sandwich. And, it, and it's two options. There's a $79 one without cameras and a $99 one with cameras. Mm-hmm. And and really, for they were well made. We were really surprised. They didn't feel like something completely cheap. Yeah, there it is. Oh. That's a $79 one. And it's white. Um, that's my, <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. Like, I, it's, it comes in white and black. And they're not not available in the U.S. at this point yet, but they will be soon. So um, I believe we have the $99 one somewhere in-house. And oh, we're okay. probably going to be, uh, you know, showing it on a, as, a, as a little review thing. But this is a $79 one. There it is. It's one. not bad. Not bad at all. So, yeah. I mean, you know, just I just want to give pe- your, your listeners some perspective here. Because yeah. obviously, 
you're still paying really three hundred and fifty dollars for this uh, without a contract. Yeah, I and mean, I, but they're gonna I, they're gonna prey on people. That's the thing. And I people question are gonna... the need for the con, you know, for the the the, the contract when you yeah. can probably you know share a hotspot or something on another device you already have. Yeah. Totally, that's but a really good point. There are people who are gonna fall for it. That's the thing. I mean, not, oh, not yeah. that it's not that it's a scam, but there are people who aren't as in the know as all of us. Who well, you know, like, and it makes me wonder. Like, is any now? Now, mind you, there are there are plenty of people that are just against any sort of subsidy. Subsidy. I can't even say that. Subsidizing their devices. How about that? Um, at all. But I think people are way more used to, at least in the U.S., uh, subsidizing their phones than they are their tablets. Mm -hmm. Like, do you see a difference there? I mean, subsidizing your tablet just seems kind of strange to me for some reason. But maybe that's because the tablet that I have is Wi-Fi only. Yeah. And I don't know if I would pay for, you know, service for this. I don't know. I've never, I've, for a tablet I've never had a, I've only had Wi-Fi tablet, so I, I yeah. haven't been, it, because I have the hotspot on my phone, yeah, so right. whenever I need, so I don't know what it's like to have the tablet and be able to get access anywhere, you know, um, but it's interesting because I wonder what the life cycle versus a phone versus a tablet is, whether yeah. you need a new tablet and is two years good or not. For me, two years is not good enough for a phone. I generally go through phones about one every year Right, or so. me too. Um, tablets? Tablets, I mean, I've had <laughs> iPad one since for a while now. Yeah. 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 So. I agree. And I think the people that I know who have contracts with the iPad uh, specifically, they just opt to do it maybe a couple months a year. You know, mm -hmm. they have that option to turn it off and turn it on, which right. that's the kind of option that I want um, yeah. for mm -hmm. an Android Absolutely. tablet as well. Because yeah. I know I'm, there's going to be months where I'm not traveling, so I'm home. I got Wi-Fi with my tablet. Right. Uh, but when I you're traveling, it would be nice to, to be able to just turn it on for like a week or so. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So. Totally. All right. All right. Cool. So some uh, some more feedback. We got an email from Ryan who um, was calling to correct me from last episode. He says <laughs> on the most recent on the most recent episode, episode forty five, Mandroid, um, <laughs> and he points out that Mandroid dot com is taken. Unfortunately, it sucks. Damn. Um, yeah. But so on the most recent episode, we talked about the Logitech review, and you mentioned that video calling it only worked review to review. Uh, Logitech review to a Logitech review. This is not true. You can download a Logitech vid software to your computer to video call between a review and a computer. I got my parents to review for Christmas so we could video chat even though I don't have a review. By the um, by the way, but, uh, I don't need the rest of this. But anyway, um, so he's pointing <laughs> out that you can Logitech does have software that you can utilize if with if you have a review and someone who doesn't or vice versa. I didn't call that out because admittedly I did I, I, it's not like I didn't know about that but we were talking about review to review and using Skype on Google TV and being able to connect TV to TV mm -hmm. and while it's true you can utilize this if you have a review and someone else doesn't it still doesn't solve the problem that right. you, that's you know that that it's it's manufacturer dependent it's their app it's yeah. not Skype it's not ubiquitous not everybody has the Logitech uh, review video chatter and that yeah. sort of thing so mm -hmm. um, so just want to point that out and then he also uh, has a PS and says they feels that you guys underplayed the app Glimpse which is an app that I did in the arena I, I usually send a glimpse to all my family members when traveling to see them so they know how far away I am from them and don't have to call asking every 10 minutes it also gives you live <laughs> updates if you look at it online meaning it shows the dot moving and the person's speed um, which is another great uh, reason for Glimpse, and you should go back and vote for Glimpse in the previous uh, poll. If I, if so. I was to give my parents a glimpse yeah. and say, hey, you know, here's here's me traveling, go ahead and check it every once in a while, I'd, yeah. wow, I'd be really surprised if they ever checked it. Yeah. So props to your parents yeah, yeah. Exactly. for using but, Glimpse. But thank you for the email and the corrections, and it's always good to, to you know, we want to be as you know co comprehensive as possible, so it's yeah. good to hear you chime in. So always. thank you for that. I'd be worried my mom would give me trouble for going too fast in my car. Yeah. <laughs> for going you know, too you'd I mean, be getting text messages. Stop. Slow I down. see you. Did you just run a, a red light? <laughs> <laughs> slow down. Slow down, please. All right, it's time for apps. Mm -hmm. Oh, well then. And I'm back. Hello there. Wow. <laughs> Hello there. Okay. Uh, first, just really quickly, Google Docs uh, updated uh, for Android, and there is better offline support, actually. Uh, there is now an offline mode and a better tablet experience. I actually have it on the Galaxy tab here. Uh, to go offline, if you see, uh, oh, I guess you can't see. There's too many it's so documents. White. Ah, it's can so you, white. Can, should I, I should probably change my brightness on here. Sorry. Can you see that? There, there we go. That's, we better. Go. That's better. Okay, so uh, here is uh, all the list of documents that I have. If you want to uh, take one of your documents offline, here's a little uh, arrow. Press the arrow on the right, and there's a checkbox for available offline. And next time you use it, 
uh, you can open this and make edits uh, offline, and then your doc, once you go online, will automatically sync once you've made the uh, updates. Now combine this with the Asus Transformer Prime, and you've got a travel laptop. Yeah. That's yeah, you can't make edits, yeah. though, when it's offline. Right. But you can... Uh, but you can which actually... Yeah. The, I actually I mean, used sinks. the offline last Thursday. Oh. I teach a class, and I had yeah. my whole notes on you it. You could access it. And yeah. Access. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Access yeah. it. Um, and so I put it in offline mode. It actually puts it into more of a reader display, so things are a little bit bigger. It's yeah. not as... I don't know. You know, it's like Google Docs on on tablet and Android devices. It's great to have it, but wow, they still have so far to go. Make the editing better. Like that's what you want to do when you open up these docs. You don't want to yep. use like a a makeshift web editor. You want it to be a native a, editor, a, a yeah. fully baked yeah. experience that isn't that doesn't make you want to pull your hair out. Yep. But I but I the offline thing is actually a really cool feature. Yep. Oh yeah, uh, yeah look, it got really large. Yeah. If you just take it looks like I'm, it looks like it's losing some of the format. Now I'm offline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's much larger than the previous. Uh, uh, look. Yeah, so it changes the view of it a little bit. Yep. Anyway, um, which actually for me worked out great because okay. I wanted it larger, <laughs> and then it ended up being larger. So that's awesome. Uh, so cool. Uh, so Dropbox, uh, love that service. We've definitely talked about it on previous episodes. They have a beta going on right now that you can get through their site. And if you do it, if you sign up for this beta and download their uh, their beta version of the app, you can get up to five gigs of extra storage for free on your Dropbox account. Now, basically what they're doing here is they're testing out something similar to Google Plus's upload images automatically feature, but with Dropbox. So essentially it taps into your gallery. So as you take new pictures those are uploaded to your Dropbox automatically. It will take the pictures that you already have in your gallery and upload all of those. And I, and I can't remember what the, uh, what the amount is, but for every, for every so-and-so, you know, data, mm-hmm. such and such amount of data you upload to them, you get around 500 megs of free storage incrementally until you hit five gigs. I did it. I'm now up to 10 gigs on my Dropbox account. Nice. And, uh, you know, I mean, at that point, if you wanted to, you could Does take your pull- photos down, but it's actually a really cool service. It, I, so I pay for Dropbox. Will I get five gig more on top of what I pay? Mm. I would guess that you I would. I look into you that. Would too. Yeah, cool. They're pretty good about that. Dropbox, yeah. I really like Yeah. Them, so. But anyways, check it out uh, at their site. It's a part of the Dropbox forum. Cool. So Jason, you actually have you actually have 10 gigs of pictures? Well, no, I had... I had close to five on my phone. Mm. And wow. at the end of uploading all of that, wow. I think I, I had the five gigs of someone made extra fun space. of me the other day because we were talking about uh we were talking about the, the waterfall near Seattle where the the Twin Peaks open is mm-hmm. and I got all excited and I pulled out my phone and I showed the picture that I took of it two years ago. My friend's like, Why do you have photos from two years ago on your phone? And I was like, Because I can. I know, like, I do too, honestly. Why wouldn't you? I just keep <laughs> stuff. I know. So I, well, yeah, we're hoarders. We are hoarders. Yeah. We're digital. <laughs> Hoarders. We're, di- we're 21st century hoarders. That's the problem. Don't don't tell the TV show. They're, they're, they're onto Uh-oh. us. It's a yeah. spinoff series. <laughs> Digital hoarders. It is. It's a good idea. You guys should do that. You should, you should do, do like that, a spoof. Huh? Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> That's not all right. Bad. In terms of some more app news, my app of the year for 2011 was Food Spotting, and uh, Food Spotting version three uh, launched last week, and I was very excited to see it. I actually, got to go to their launch party at their headquarters in uh, San Francisco, which was awesome. But uh, new app pretty much uh, makes the Food Spotting experience that much better. Um, they've really improved the the want it versus want it when you want to try something versus hide it when you don't like something, and they've rolled that into basically being now the Pandora for food. For food. So based off your previous kind of interactions, they can re- make recommendation uh, recommendations based on where you are, based off the foods that you like and the foods that you don't like, which is awesome. So taking the whole food mobile experience, another step. I dig it. Okay. Um, I did want to mention really quickly uh, uh, an update to RDO that's not on our lineup. Sorry. (laughs) I was just very uh, impressed that they finally uh, updated the app if you're an RDO user. Um, Now the app, oh, I don't know why that's not working there, uh, includes more uh, options and it's uh, virtually like the, I've had a complaint about certain apps just not being the same on Android as on uh, iOS and they have updated RDO and it is now like the iOS app. So now there's more options like new releases, top charts, recommended, stuff that I actually like to have. It's it's the experience that you have on the desktop and we should have that on the phone and we have that now. So kudos to RDO for finally making that update. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. Uh, now I'm just waiting for another app. The, Miriam, unicorn, you, the uni- unicorn app. Do you use a music <laughs> subscri- uh, subscription service? Or? 
Um, sometimes I use, uh, let's see, Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an RDO account, uh, of course, less FM and Pandora, but yeah. I'm, I'm not that uh, big on those. I mean, I, I do listen to a lot of like internet stream radio stations mm-hmm. that are not specifically tied into any app. So I do have a, a radio streamer app on my on all my phones to do that with presets, basically, that I just listen to. I do a lot of that. Um, I like to discover music, but I'm not quite sure that the existing services are... I think the music right now is just too... Well, I wouldn't say mainstream because... Uh, it's probably not the right word, but I mean, this, for the kind of stuff I like, I just don't find it there. So yeah. I just tr- generally discover it through listening to internet radio stations and then Googling it or going to, you know, uh, various online retailers that deal with DJ stuff. And that's how I get my music. So, you know, I, I, I did see the, the update to the audio app, so I haven't che- t- had time to check it out yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. RDO is the service that just gets no love. Like every, everybody <laughs> loves, everyone loves, loves Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> and everybody loves Pandora. <laughs> but nobody really is just like, I love RDO. Like, and uh-huh. the thing is, is that like RDO has, it's the people who did Skype. So we know like they've, they're proven. The service is really cool. I mean, I do, I do a monthly mix. I do like a, a mm-hmm. 13 song mix and I put it out on RDO, Spotify, A Tracks, mm-hmm. um, and my blog, and I love the RDO interface. Like I have a blast using it. Now that said, I don't use it on my phone. <laughs> I don't, it's not like I'm sitting here giving <laughs> RDO all this love. But I feel bad because RDO is like the app that doesn't get respect. I, just I, love I RDO, know, man. I I think you hit the nail on the head. And yeah. then like you and I use it, we're like, come on, come yeah, on. It's like, cool. no, I use Google Music. No, yeah. I just you know. But, I do but, use Google Music a lot actually because yeah. yeah. I can upload my own tunes to That's it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, Google Music yeah. all the way for me, but personally, mm-hmm. but. Yeah. Uh, and just really quickly, uh, Android developers are being lured over to uh, the BlackBerry world to develop apps for uh, the BlackBerry playbook. And if you try that out, you might get a free playbook. Submit your yeah. apps by February 13th. <laughs> Good luck with that. I mean, you uh, <laughs> don't like getting the free playbook, but the, the other stuff. I mean, I encourage you to get the free playbook because I'm sure that eventually when they drop support for the hardware, everybody will port Android to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know how it goes. Everything gets Android eventually. That's why I got a touchpad for now. Oh, you got one. Yeah. And do you enjoy it? <laughs> Because you- I actually it broke while I was on news uh, on the site. Oh. I was so I was like, hmm, well, I'll just go in and buy one and then <laughs> talk to my other f- uh, colleagues, and we all got them that night. It was just a party. We oh just, like, wow! So you were actually party. just checking out the HP site, and it went boom. You saw- yeah, we broke it. Oh, it you was broke just it. I see. I see. And, got and it. Got they- it. Got it. And of course, you're going to get it. Yeah, ninety nine bucks. Why not? I know. All right. <laughs> so uh, I just thought that was a little funny story for anybody who wants a BlackBerry playbook. Uh, I mean, I mean, the hardware, actually, I think it, hardware. Well, I, I love the seven-inch form factor. I, I, if yeah. I have a pick a tablet, that's my preferred form factor. You know what? That's my that's preferred too. Actually, I, I've, I've discovered. A lot of, I got. I hear a lot of hate for the seven-inch form factor. I, a lot of the, the people in my circles don't dig it because a lot of the, the comic book people and they, mm, you know, they, they want, want the, the larger, walk, the bigger. Landscape. But I like yeah. the, I like the one-handed. I mm-hmm. like it. I have a MacBook Air that's eleven inches across. If I want something a little bigger, right? And mm-hmm. it's a full-blown computer. So that's true. Why do I need a 10-inch tablet? I don't. Yeah. I need a 7-inch tablet, though. And then the 7.7 7 that you mentioned, the Samsung. Yeah. That I I love. <laughs> I mean, that's my favorite right now. I think yeah. of all of them, that's, that's you know, there's a 7 Plus. There's the original 7. There's uh-huh. a 7.7. 7, there's an 8.9 and 10. And I really do think that the 7.7, 7, because it's physically the same size as the 7 Plus. So it's got yeah. less bezel, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's 7.7. Three millimeters thick. Oh, yeah, it's so thin. I'm waiting for that. I I, I, I actually asked. You know, that. there is a Wi-Fi version you can import, and there is oh. a GHSPA AT and T compatible version that you can import. Oh, you should not have so, told me that. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, honestly, personally, I would never want to get the LT version because it's kind of stuck with it with mm-hmm. Verizon, and I don't really use Verizon, and I travel a lot. So I would be more tempted to either get the pure Wi-Fi or the uh, HSPA Plus version, which will work. Uh, in may, many networks abroad, but I believe it's yeah. stuck with each with uh, AT and T in the US for I the see. frequency compatibilities. Yeah. All right, well, more food for thought. Thank you, Miriam. <laughs> I've been debating what tablet am I going to get. Uh, all right, well, before we move on, uh, just a quick email from Hunter that says, "Just wanted to let you guys know that the awesome people at uh, Humble Bumble have launched an Android Humble." 
bundle. Humble you, bundle. Humble, humble, did I, did bundle. I, did I, what did I say? Did I say humble? Humble, 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 Oh, man, I didn't know that. Unlimited downloads and your purchase donates to charity, I thought. If you guys, when I saw Osmos on for Android on there, which was another one of my games. I, I just need to Os- review all I of these. I keep seeing Osmos pop up everywhere, by the way. Apparently, you're not alone in that. Everyone's I should have originally game. won that yeah. that week, well, everybody. Oh, well, you did. So. <laughs> yeah, I did win, but I won by default. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, thanks, Hunter. And uh, go to HumbleBundle.com. H-U-M-B-L-E-B-U-N-D-L-E dot. Humble bundle. Humble, Say it. Hum, humble, humble bundle. Humble, humble, humble bundle. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, say Netflix three times. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. Netflix, Netflix. Netflix, Netflix. Okay, Netflix, that, Netflix, Netflix. That, <laughs> that was good. Oh, yes. I appreciate you, you schooling. That uh, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Whoa. Netflix, Netflix. Streaming thousands of TV episodes and movies directly to you instantly. Uh, you can watch them on a number of devices. I'm sure you already know this because you've heard me talk about it a million times. Love Netflix. Lately, I've been, uh, I hate to say it, I've been watching Friday Night. Yes! And? <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of football. What season? Right, it's a it's lot okay. of football. I'm still in the first season. <laughs> that is the masterpiece season, but then season four, oh my I've God. I've heard that three, four, and five are great. Two is uh, horrible. I'm not looking forward to are, two. Four are great. So. Uh, I don't know about three is coming out of the dark from two, yeah. but you just kind of keep with it. They had a writer's the strike, so it's a two. short season anyways, okay, and then good. after that, it's short seasons because they were only on DirecTV and not necessarily, anyways. All right. uh, but yeah. Well, one thing I really don't love about Netflix is when I hear everybody around the Twit studio talking about a show called Friday Night Lights and then saying how the entire season is on Netflix, it's very easy to impulsively then that night say, hey, we should watch Friday Night Lights and then get sucked into three episodes back to back. So uh, Netflix streaming on your devices makes that possible. We have a PS3 at home that, that we stream to, but you can do it on a number of devices. You can do it on your computer, your Android devices, uh, I, iOS devices, uh, Apple TV, all all different types, Xbox 360, whatever you have, even a Roku box, obviously, uh, they're supporting Netflix as well. And it's very easy to just choose the things you want to see, and uh, you're showing... You're 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 giving me spoilers. I know. I Spoiler. thought I hit season spoilers. one. I'm okay, listen, sorry. Spoiler listen, alert. Listen, they ah. play football. Okay, yes, right, true. So don't worry. They I play football. I hit season one and then it's season <laughs> That's okay. I'm just four. not going to look. <gasps> I just love my new, fa- my new favorite hobby is making fun of Friday Night Lights fans because yeah. I'm just like, I don't like football. Like, it's not about football. But every time it I turn it on, is. it's about football. No, it but, kind of is about football. No, it is about football. football but I yeah. think, see, I'm not a big football fan <laughs> and I still I've heard, enjoy it. I've heard that. Yes, I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind it. It's a, it's a good show and I'm going to stick with it. It's, it's not my my favorite show in the world. It's about the people and the relationships and the Coach Taylor or whatever his name is. Is it Taylor? Yeah, it's yeah. All right. We'll try Netflix today for free for 30 days. You can play the Grand Friday Night Lights Challenge and either uh, sing our praises or punch us in the face next time you see us, uh, depending on how you like it. Go to Netflix.com slash twit. Be sure to use that URL when you sign up for your free trial. It's Netflix.com slash twit. And we thank Netflix for their support of twit, uh, as well as all about Android. Thank you, Netflix. Uh, love Netflix. 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 Thank Netflix. You. Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> That'll nice. be the new ad. That's all we need to do from now on. All right, let's uh, let's jump into the arena. All right. To enter, one lives the Android Arena. All cute robots. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, we do have cute robots. Wait, 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 wait. I have something here. Oh. 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 Oh, nice, very cool. Nice. Yep. Hello, hello, you earthlings. This is the android robot. <laughs> we should uh, we should pit that robot against another robot yeah. into an arena and see which one comes see out who, on stage. See who leaves. Yeah. So have see to who enter. And then, yeah, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, so last week we had uh, an arena with Ron, myself, and Aaron Newcomb. Or, or yeah, Newcomb. For some reason in my head, I saw like Duke Nukem when I said his last name, <laughs> but it is Nukem. So there you go. He wasn't uh, vaporware. He was here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 
happy to report that my weather app, of all things, One Weather, won. People love weather. I'm telling yeah. you, there's no, a whole it's a channel no, dedicated have, to that. But have you know, did you see that app? It's a pretty app. I, I, I saw the app. I, yes. tweet, I, I posted on Google Plus, actually, that I went back and changed my vote from Yelp, which So that's I why still, all your fans yeah, revolted. But, exactly. And, it's okay. Yeah. Every now and then you got to tip your hat. You got to say, "Good job, Jason. You 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 okay. found the you found the superior app. I I fall on my sword, but this but this <laughs> week necessary. I'm coming back strong. All right, okay. well, we'll see about that. <laughs> One weather wins with 53 percent of the votes. Wiimote controller comes in second at 36 percent, and Yelp. I can't believe I lost uh, the damn Wiimote controller. 12 percent. Yeah, because Yelp. Yelp is so old. That's why. But this, but it, but I had an angle. Did you watch the show? It was new to me. It was new to me. Like I I discovered a use for it. I'd previously rejected the app, and then I brought it back, and then it worked for. I what think I needed your rejection it. from previous. Yeah. Hurt you? Yeah, probably. Yeah. No, but then I no, but because it, it was crappy when it first came out. Yeah, 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 it was. Well, there were a lot of people in the chat room as you were doing the review that were like, "Yelp equals I'm out." Like, right, I know. It was yeah. like whatever. Instant, no, it was yeah, I know. Reaction. It was instant. Yeah. Or it was like, oh, you're doing Yelp. Do you, yeah, I don't like Yelp. How so, do you people? Yeah. How do you people select restaurants? Well, Seriously. Well, it's like, you know, Yelp has a lot of flack. Yeah, uh, no, 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 you know no. that people are gaming the reviews, and yeah. people who work at the establishments are having their employees go in there with different, you know, usernames yeah. and bumping up the their ratings on there. So yeah. they've been getting flack for years. I mean, I still use it, but. Yeah. I use it with other things. Well, so Tech Ace uh, one just updated us in the in, in the chat room that we are now Jason, you and I are tied in the arena. Was I behind? You were Last behind. Week? I was leading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you you cl- you cleared the gap and now we're tied. Excellent. So, all right. All right. Prepare to go down. So do I lead right. off here? So yeah. Why don't you go ahead and lead us off in losing? And <laughs> there you oh. go. So um, I found some really cool looking apps. And I'm ready to win this week's arena. So uh, you can only use for, one. For those of you who are over 21, uh, that you might you <laughs> might enjoy you might enjoy a little bit of the alcoholic beverages. I do like I do enjoy I imbibe every once in a while. Um, unlike a lot of my friends, especially here in San Francisco, I'm not really that much of a beer guy. Um, I kind of have a sweet tooth. I'm not a big IPA guy. I really enjoy cocktails. Um, but if you're an old podcast watcher, one of the reasons why I love Tiki Bar TV is because they showed you how to make the drinks. And what I found today is a app called uh, Cocktail Flow, which is available both in tablet and on the phone, and basically tells you how to make cocktails. And it's done. We're talking about how these app, how um, Android apps are starting to look better and better. These are beautiful apps. I would have voted for you if you were about to make me a cocktail right now. Yeah. Well, I just happened to have brought my. Vo- <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I haven't. <laughs> that would so, be awesome. But so I anyway, know, right? so um, so the app is free uh, to download on the phone, and it's two ninety nine on the tablet. And so I'm going to show you guys both because it's just that it's just so pretty. You just got to see it. Um, so we'll cut to my tablet. You all can see me. Cool. All right. So we're going to pull this up. Prepare to be wowed. So you get this wonderful, wow. yeah, look at this, <laughs> right? Look at this. All right, and so what's really interesting is that it's packed full of functionality. So you can go into your bar stock and you can identify what what type of ingredients you have in your bar. So for example, I've got some gin, I've got some, I've got some dark rum. Uh, last party I had, we drank all the Angostura, so that's gone. We drank all the champagne, so that's gone, but I added some whiskey. And you can identify the liquors that you have, the Coors. And your mixers, you can say I've got some lemon juice, some lime juice, and then it will show you the drinks that you can make from your bar. So wow. given great. given what I've got, that's so I'm well, great. Two wows yeah. from Miriam. Wow, see, there you go. <laughs> so let's say I want to make a city slicker. So I can go hit the city slicker and it's gonna show me this is how you make it. So what you've got is you, you you've got um, it's gonna give you similar cocktails here. You can make it a, a, your favorite. It shows you the ingredients and it shows you how to make the drink. So in this but, particular but- but there is an opp- a fill opportunity here to cross market it to the movie city slickers. Cause. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, the movie cocktail. Yeah, um, exactly. Oh, the movie cocktail. But so, um, so that's just one angle. So what you can do is you can dive into cocktails based off what you already have in your bar, or you can just you can browse through cocktails through categories. And if you, for example, let's say you're looking for, listen, I'm. I learned at an early age to stay away from tequila. I don't know about you, so I don't want any tequila drinks. Um, I tend to try to just drink brown liquors, like uh, brown liquids. So I'm just gonna go with whiskeys. And so here, here are all the here are all the various um, uh, recipes that involve whiskey. Um, now, if I want to back up a step, I can go and say, okay, what what type of cocktail would you like? 
And so you can get a classical cocktail, a long drink, tropical, creamy, non-alcoholic for those who don't who don't drink or, you know, um, or also uh, shots, shooters. Yeah, I want shots. All right, so we're going to look at the shots, the shooters, and we're going to get you and, oh, well, not Ooh, the orgasm. Bloody brain. We'll go for a bloody yeah. brain. We'll ignore the <laughs> orgasm. Um, <laughs> so here it shows you the ingredients are half part Irish cream, one part peach schnapps, five drops grenadine, and tells you how to make them. And it tells you that I'm missing three of the ingredients. So talk about cool. Then it gets even better. All wow. right. So, you also so not only that, but it's also got guides to help you because making cocktails is not easy. So what this what this can do is it tells you how to um, what things you might need, like sugar syrup and half and half, ice, glasses, garnishes. It uh, gives you an introduction to barware, the different types of glasses. Did you know the difference between an old-fashioned glass or a shot glass or a mixing glass and the, the weird little measuring cup that I can't stand because I don't like when people measure the amount of liquor that goes in my cocktails? Um, <laughs> but they also explain garnishes, other ways to do So it's a great little guide for those who are trying to get better at cocktails. But then what's even in- more interesting is that in addition, you can search and you can favorites and stuff like that. But um, they've also got these packages. So, for example, let's say, you know, there are some key holidays coming up. Valentine's Day. And let's say, so Valentine's Day, so Valentine's Day is coming up. I've already downloaded this. This will download a package of cocktails that are specific to the holiday. So I wanted to, I wanted to make for my darling, I'm going to make an Arise My Love, <laughs> which is five parts sparkling wine, one part mint liqueur. Uh, fairly easy to make. And it also tells you if you like this, then you might like, you know, a Cure Royale or Raspberry Champagne. Um, so very cool. But then on top of it, even it doesn't stop there in the settings. Not only you see this lovely tropical, you might relate Eileen to this tropical I background. Miss it. Yeah, you're making right? me. Uh... But so I don't really want. But let's say you're like, oh, it's Valentine's Day, so I should theme the app to be Valentine's Day. How but cool! Wait, there's more. How cool know, is that? Right? So that's the tablet version. <laughs> I don't even know why. Oh, wait, I should, I'm not going to stop at the tablet. So then we're oh, going to go to the, wait, phone, the version. phone version. I don't so, even know why we should even submit our. So app. if we go to the phone <laughs> version, all right. Hang on, I've got the stage. Um, so if we go to the phone version, we load it up. Now again, the tablet version is two ninety nine. The phone version is free. Okay. Now the the way they made the phone version is that those packages, like the Valentine's Day package and mm-hmm. the additional drinks, they charge those about ninety nine cents per package. So if you want to add more cocktails to your phone, that's where they get you. Mm-hmm. So for example, the Super Bowl cocktails are ninety nine cents. Oh, but that. but with within here, the phone is interesting because it's a completely you know similar totally, but unique yeah. but unique looking app. Um, you can just hit surprise me, and it'll just give you a random cocktail. Oh, what, and this pit, we got a maiden's, maiden's prayer. prayer. And what it will do is it will give you the it will give you the ingredients here. Well, you don't have that. And surprise me. It uh, doesn't have it on the tablet. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you go into the preparation. We'll show you how to prepare it. All right. And then what I love is it'll also show you similar. So, for example, like I know I like old fashions. What drinks are like old fashions? And it will give you the suggestions here. So when I'm at the bar, you know I'm pulling this up to order stuff. Um, similar way to uh, to browse through the categories, all cocktails or by the base drink. In this particular case, you can search by color. Like, you know, Jason, I know you like your pink drinks. So, yes. you know, so in this case, I can search by pink. And next time we go out, I'm going to get you a gin daisy. Okay. Um, well, that looks good. Yeah, doesn't it? So, I don't know. It just, it, the, the combination of the fact that it has so much information and so much ways to get to that information. And for the phone app, it also gives you a shopping list. So you can, sorry. So you can um, go through and let's say you need to buy um, various ingre- ingredients. It will tell you what you need to buy. So, for example, you know, in order to get the Charles cocktail, I need to get some Angostura, some brandy, and some vermouth. It's just a well designed, well done app. Even the settings looks pretty. You know, you can set the currency and the language as well on the phone. Um, you know, all in all, it's just great. So cocktail flow, if you're looking to get into the world of cocktails, if you want to learn how to make cocktails, if you personally for me, I don't want I don't even want to learn how to make them. I just want to order something different at the bar. So it's a great little resource. Looks beautiful. Cutting edge of user interface on Android apps. I feel like Ron really worked on his presentation yeah, this week. I really like did. it is the this is like the biggest presentation you've given. Yeah. I mean, it was like, here's the tablet. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, oh, wait, no. There's Let me more. show you the phone. There's more. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Well, I'm stepping up my game here in February. I got to get a couple of wins under my belt now that I'm, okay. now that I'm tied for first. <laughs> All right. So, Cocktail Flow, $2.99, tablet version, you know free phone version. I like it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't I do even like think it. I should do my app yes. now. <laughs> Not yet. This is what happens when I lead off. See? <laughs> okay, if you lead off, you got to lead off strong. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
I really don't even want to do my. Hey, I have right a now. question. Does yes. that does that uh, cocktail app support mocktails at all? Because I I don't drink alcohol, so it I'd does. Love to, it, I'd love to know if they have a package for that. It does actually. If we go back here, where Fantastic. was it? Hang on a second. Uh, cocktails uh, by type. There's a whole non-alcoholic section. Wow. So awesome. you can download a non-alcoholic package. Five wows from and Miriam. <laughs> not only that, can, with the non-alcoholic package, can you just download it if the tablet version is totally for free, but it includes cocktails called the Atomic Cat and the Batman cocktail, oh, which okay. is pretty cool. So I, I need, You need to send me the recipe for the Atomic Cat. All right, I will. It looks I it's downloading right now. This podcast. There is no share function. That's There is no post to Twitter or email or anything like that. Like the one only comment. That's the one You're thing. Fired. But so if you, if, you had, <laughs> if you had four parts orange juice and four parts, four parts tonic and ice cubes, you could make yourself an Atomic Cat. So there you go. All right. That's cool. Excellent. Thank you. Cocktail flow. Get it. Live it, I'm like love embarrassed it. to do my app. Remember, oh, remember you, when we did the, uh, the the when I did the Charlie Brown Christmas app, yes. <laughs> and it killed everybody. And then you were like, uh. "What's great is that I've got like seven more lined up for the next two months." Seven? Yeah, yeah we'll see about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I've been on vacation for a week, so I really list. I nope. didn't have you. You guys were like, "What was the app? What's the app uh, yeah. selection this week?" And Jason, you're like, "Could be anything." I'm like, "Great," because I don't know. I haven't yeah. spent time really on my phone. And I just saw what you were doing, and this is what you came up with. I know. <laughs> it's just like you with Yelp last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know what? I'm not even going to really review this. I'm going to treat this as sort of like here's an update to an old app, and because <laughs> oh, <laughs> there is wow. an update, there is an update. So that's why I was going to talk about it. I had no idea what to do this week, and I was embarrassed to to show you guys a game I've been playing. But I maybe should have gone that route, anyways. Uh, all right, well, oldie but goodie, and certainly just revised is Double Twist, and it is free in the Android marketplace. Let me look. <laughs> but hey, guess what they did? They just added Plus Podcasts. So what that means is now you can uh, subscribe through your phone uh, to uh, various podcasts. We're on there, actually. Cool. Uh, so the app is free. Here's, here's the thing about Double Twist. You guys know. You add your music on here. The uh, layout has since uh, changed as well. So the settings you have to do is just go uh, swipe to the uh, right, swipe back to music. You can go to videos here. Uh, and now there's a pod dedicated podcast uh, app and uh, you have to pay. There's a lot. The only thing about Double Twist that I don't like is that there's a lot of in-app purchases and it kind of adds up. So air syncing, which is great, right? We all know that you can air sync um, your phone. You could uh, to the desktop app. Uh, you could air play to uh, devices like the Xbox, the PS3 and all that. That's another, you know, three ninety nine. And then this um uh, this podcast, yeah, and then yeah. the podcast is four ninety nine. Now, a lot of you, if you're going to pay for Dog Catcher or Podcasts uh, uh, or Beyond Pod or Pocket Cast, I couldn't remember the name, you're going to pay an extra for that uh, as well. So, um, so if you don't want to pay for those and you want to just use one dedicated app, maybe this is for you. Um, and again, there's a radio uh, option here. I, l I do like the podcast option here, and uh, there we are, all about Android. Let me go back here. Uh, let me see if I can go home. I don't even know how to use it. Look at that. Um, okay. You're rusty after vacation. We I am under, rusty we under, we after understand. vacation. We understand. <laughs> oh, podcast directory. What I wanted to show is, look at, we're there. We're on their podcast directory up there. Actually, that's the reason why I decided to go ahead and uh, <laughs> talk about this app. I'm like, oh, well, uh, at the very well, least. Thanks, it wasn't please, any no. functionality. It was like, no. oh, they promoted they us. They promoted us. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Double. Well, at least you're honest but, about that. Hey, <laughs> it is a new feature that just came out um, and also something that they added which I believe is still in beta but is a, a gripe that I had for the longest time was uh, storage to your memory card versus internal they didn't have that for a long time and that just came out and it doesn't work for all phones so be careful uh, you, because some of the phones are still in experimental mode but uh, I have optioned finally to uh, locate all my music and uh, put it uh, add it onto my memory card and not internal that's your theme this week is finally getting what you want it is yeah. it is yeah. finally yeah. audio finally, finally SD card support uh, yeah. yeah yeah so I don't know there's not much else to say about this app I mean really I know a lot of people use Google Music I know a lot of people uh, using cloud services I still uh, 
need oh um to use double twist for i find myself in situations where i like having the phone on my or the music on my phone um and i know you can do offline support with all those other services but you know it's just in case of emergency for for whatever reason those apps don't work you can always have it on your phone and play it and i like it just as a standalone player i also like the lock music um uh option if you uh have this go into lock mode uh, you can, uh, you know, see it full screen uh, and and hit forward or, or uh, backwards um, while you're driving. That's what I use it for. And also the other option here, if I can, I'm so rusty at this, you guys. Uh, oh, the other option is you can get missing album art again with another fee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's so the thing is yeah they kind of nickel and dime you and all that stuff but uh and yes perky bells in the uh, uh chat room says air twist to media servers yes you could do that as well um so there you go double twist i tried to beat uh <laughs> i don't even know that that it's worth it for you, me to you'll spend be too much time week. yeah it's all right don't worry it's okay <laughs> yeah it's all right but i know a lot of people have downloaded this right? sure they have sure they have <laughs> Okay, whatever. No, Double people, Twist. A lot of people have downloaded Yelp too, by the way. Yeah, they have. A lot of people. No, Double <laughs> Double Twist does allow support to air, to air play to external mm-hmm. speakers. So it is cool in that regard. There's I mean, it's not it's not as good that. as mine, but I'll give you that. So. <laughs> All right, Miriam. Uh, what app uh, would you like to highlight? Well, today? Uh, my latest discovery has been Path, which is conveniently cross-platform because I tend to jump around from device to device a lot. Um, I, you know, I had heard about it. I never really checked it out. A friend of mine was using it. So I went ahead and installed it on both my Net Galaxy Nexus and my iPhone. Uh, and I was very pleasantly surprised with the user experience. My only gripe is that uh, the UI on Ice Cream Sandwich on, um, at least on a Galaxy Nexus with the kind of resolution it has, you know, 1280 mm-hmm. by 768, the font is insanely small. And it doesn't, uh, it, is, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't seem to, to properly, uh, take advantage of the higher DPI by making, rendering everything bigger. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, like that's say compared to the, um, to the, uh, to the iOS version, which is about right font size wise, but possibly on the small side. But I think the overall UI is really interesting. I like the concept that it's a social network only on your device. So you can't really do anything on the web and that it limits you to about 150 people. Um, it's, it seems like a good idea. I, the reason I haven't really started using it per se and putting content in there yet is because I'm, Kind of like, do I really need yet another social network, right? Because mm, I mean, yeah. between Twitter, Facebook, and G+, which are the big three I use, that's a lot, right? So I'm like, how do I resolve this? I would love to possibly use Path as my primary maybe picture um, thing. But then again, you know, how does that fit in with the other the other social network? So uh, I've got it, I've downloaded it, I've created an account, um, but I have yet to really use it and I need to figure out a good use case scenario for myself. But I have to say that of all the social networking apps that I've used right now, this is definitely the best UI I've ever seen. And, and I really think that it's they're onto something with this uh, phone only or tablet only um, 150 people approach, kind of like Instagram. I'm, I'm can't wait to see Instagram on on Android. That's like really is the only thing still making me smile when I use an iPhone. Yeah, Instagram. they. Uh, it should be noted that Path actually on the third of February released an update um, to address the screen size. So what you see right now is actually the corrected screen size. They added check. support for <laughs> more resolutions. It's still a little on the small side and I totally agree, but wow, it's way better than it was before. It used to be so small. Like, yeah, yeah. it was pretty yeah. bad. It does look yeah. better there from what I can see. Mm-hmm. I think I'm still running the old app. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very recent, uh, or recent, recent, recent release. That's so good they, they recently, but, yeah, no, we, we talked about path when it first came out in episode 37. Um, and it's beautiful. I mean, it's, and it's fun. I, I, I I agree with you. I like I like the smaller, you know, instead of you know thousands of people sharing and a lot of noise on the channel, and it's it's uh, focused to just people who I'm actually friends with, and it's actually yeah. really really nice. I love the little menu pop up and stuff like that. Path is a great app, so very cool. So uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't really have much more to say than that. I just it's cool. more of a discovery than a I'm trying to sell you guys on it thing because you know yeah. I I just was like, hmm, I'm not a huge app person. I really just always install the same apps on all my devices, mm-hmm. probably because I switch devices so much. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I will do my review. That was Path and uh, my app. 
rounding out the Android arena is an IRC app called And Chat. It's free. It's actually an app that I've used for the last, I, I don't know, I feel like I've used this since I got my original Droid. And they've actually done a lot to upgrade it. Um, and they recently rolled out changes so that it works on both the tablet as well as uh, has ice cream sandwich um, kind of stylings on the phone. Excuse me. Um, so I just logged into the Twit IRC chat room, and it just it looks good. You have all the options that you want out of a really good IRC client. It's completely free. There is a donate version as well. It doesn't add any functionality. But some of the things that this allows you to do, colored text, uh, as you can see, if someone says something to me, I'm Reagan01 in the chat room, it'll actually color the, you know my name so I know somebody... Uh, actually pinged me. Uh, it does allow you to uh, connect to multiple servers simultaneously. So if you're on a few different chat channels, you can kind of be logged into uh, both of those at the same time. So that's pretty cool. I always like to hide the join and part messages. And for the most part, this does it, though some things sometimes seem to get through. And, oh, I know why it's not showing the colors because I'm logged in on my PC, as on my Mac as well. So, yeah, so some people are, like, chatting me up and... And it's not coloring it. Let me see here. So Raygun01. Do you want to send? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm just doing this. There we go. Now my nick should be Raygun01, I hope. Um, anyways, timestamps if you like those things. Not a big fan of that, but uh, it's there if you need it. Fully customized notifications. So you've got all these settings for notifications. And you can kind of determine what happens uh, when these messages come through. You know, do they play a sound? Do they vibrate? All that kind of stuff. What tone do they do? Uh, but more importantly, if someone pings you directly, it shows up up in your notification bar for you. Um, overall, you know, this is another one of those apps that's just kind of, it's an IRC app, but it's an IRC app that's done really well and is actually, you know, kind of ice cream sandwich modified very recently. Um, and I don't know if there's a whole lot of people using IRC these days, but I know our chat room does. I have to give um, the chat room credit for being exposed on the screen for so I long know. and nobody taking the low road. <laughs> I know. I, right? Good job, chat room. Hats, <laughs> off, hats off to you. Yeah. So, you know, people might not be too too entranced by IRC these days, but I wanted to give this one the exposure that I think it deserves because... It's what I use and has been since I got an Android phone for IRC. It has support for SSL, a whole bunch of security uh, options, RSSI proxy, ZNC, BIP, uh, all sorts of stuff. It also actually encrypts uh, to protect the passwords on protected servers. So uh, that's good. And then finally, customized volume actions allow you to do different things with your volume rocker as well. So uh, so that is and chat. I'm going to cut it there because yeah, I think we're running out of time. Yeah, we are running out of time. It's I'll, a, I'll have to check it out, Jason. That sounds great because I use RSC. Obviously, we have a chat room for work. So I'm ah. using Andro IRC, I think, right now. And it's me. And dryer and dry Yeah, it actually it just looks, looks good. If you have a tablet, it actually has is tablet optimized as well. Ooh, so it has yeah. a full tablet I've been actually interface. Looking it's for, actually really nice as well. I've been looking for an IRC one too, so I just downloaded it. Cool, excellent. So I don't know, the, Ron. A lot I, of a lot of I, a lot of good apps here in this week in the arena. Right. I don't know. I I, I don't know. <laughs> We'll uh, see. We'll see. This is kind someone. of all over the board here. Um, so let's wrap this up real quick. Bit.ly slash 46 AAA poll. That's the link. Bit.ly slash 46 AAA poll. Vote for your favorite. Is it Cocktail Flow, Double Twist, Path, or And Chat? So uh, let us know and uh, visit that. And I think that is it for this week. That Ooh. wraps it up. Early reports are in. I'm winning. Now I'm tied with Cocktail it's Flow. Gonna be, it's going to be tight. Cocktail Flow co is coming. Oh, oh, Cocktail Flow is running away with it. Oh. Huzzah. <laughs> well, I was winning there for a second. Yeah. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> we'll see where it is. <laughs> we'll see up. how it goes in a week, though. But yeah, no, these are all great apps. Fantastic. So. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, um, we have totally run out of time. We've got to wrap this up. But Miriam, thank you so much for joining us today on All About Android. Thank you very much for having me. It was lovely. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, please uh, please tell our viewers and listeners where they can find your work and all the things that you're doing. Uh, just look for me on Engadget.com. Uh, if you go to our editor's page, you can find my bio there. I'm um, spelled just like it is in uh, down there, right there. Down, down, <laughs> down there. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, 
primarily deal with the phones, but I deal with all kinds of other things. Also, listen to the Engadget Mobile podcast, which I host every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're on Ustream, and you'll see an announced post on the website on Engadget. So check it out. Very awesome. cool. Yeah, we'll do, Miriam. Thanks again for joining us. We'll be Thank in you. touch again soon to have you back. You're great. Very cool. Uh, Ron, plug. Real quickly, just go to about.me slash ronxo. You can find everything about me there. That's all you need to know. So enjoy your cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome. Yes, and you're welcome. <laughs> and Eileen. And you can find me about.me uh, slash Eileen Rose or on Twitter at Eileen TV. And I am at Raygun01 on Twitter, about.me slash Jason Howell. And that is it for this week. Send us a voicemail. Leave us a voicemail. We'd love to play at 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us an email or a video mail attached to your email or actually linked to from your email, aaa at twit.tv. Uh, find the show on Twitter. It's at Android Show. Show notes can always be found at our site, twit.tv slash aaa. And finally, you can catch us live every Monday 5, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, right around there at live.twit.tv. That is it for this week. Uh, see, us, see you guys next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye. Bye.